right, so uh, we've been shooting shapes and, and colors and all that kind of stuff, but I can tell you, in the history of the world, no human being has ever been injured or killed by a circle or a shape or any kind of geometric feature. It's always been something with a face, right? So we can practice marksmanship and, and where our bullets go, but at some point we got to translate that into deterrent and threat. Does that make sense? So, where do we learn our marksmanship stuff from? TV and movies, right? And most of it's wrong. One of my favorite Hollywood things is the headshot. And there'll be one little red dot right here in the head, and it ends the fight instantly, and, uh, and the person just automatically dies. Is that the way things really work? No, the light is lower. Yeah, so... So here's the problem with that head, with that headshot. Um, our ancestors survived long enough to reproduce. That's how we all got here. So evolutionary biology drove some changes and some characteristics. And one of the things is to protect the brain, we've got a real dense bone and it's curved to deflect shock. And this part of the skull right here, it's very convenient to just put a little dot of red wax there and for the makeup people to do a headshot. But this is the thickest part of your skull. And I've been told my skull is particularly thick. So if you shoot me right here with a handgun, it is probably not going to incapacitate me. And in fact, I'll probably be quite angry at you for doing that. So we need to take a little bit of what we know about anatomy. I mean, you guys are all center mass in the army we're taught to aim for the belt buckle that's the center mass that gives me the best chance of a hit if somebody's 300 yards away and i can hit him in the leg he's not going to close with me and kill me so that's a good hit for them but that's not going to incapacitate him so this guy with the skateboard is an immediate problem we got to stop him hitting us in the head or from keep him from hitting us in the head because that will kill us eventually right so what if I, so you're saying shoot him up here, right? What what does that influence? What does that affect? Yeah, so that's one way you can incapacitate somebody is reduce the blood pressure to the point where their brain can't function anymore. Okay, what's another way you can incapacitate somebody? Central nervous system. Central nervous system, and that's what we're talking about. The central nervous system is what? Uh, anything coming down from the brain. What's your brain and your spinal cord? That's that's central nervous system. Yeah. Uh, so that's good, except it's got a big skull covering that. And what's not behind the skull, we'll talk about that in a second, is real hard to hit. What's another way you incapacitate? What? Yeah, so uh, some, some kind of mobility kill, right? And usually we talk about the hiccups. All right, so central nervous system, bleeding out, the, the bone structure, the legs. Is there anything else that can incapacitate somebody? We left out the most common one. Yeah, most people do not want to play if they're going to get hurt. And so a lot of times somebody just displaying a gun or just an attitude like you're going to resist may be enough to stop them, but we can't count on that. So what if you, you know, project a lot of hostility onto the guy with the, what if you even brandish a gun at the guy with skateboard, but he's not impressed and he continues to try and kill you. So we can't count on that. And a lot of times on the street, the guys we run into are crazy. They are drug or drug addled or whatever. And they may not be intimidated by you. 
and they may possibly not feel any pain. So we've got to come up with ways, if we're going to protect ourselves, protect our loved ones, and again, I, I don't want, this is not something we kid around about, we're addressing a threat that is going to kill you or kill somebody else, and that's why we're taking these steps, right? But if we're going to, if we're going to stop this threat, there's a couple ways we do it. So we talked about the, we talked about that, everybody can see what I'm drawing, okay, you got to kind of close in. Okay, so the brain sits up in here. Brain, the lower brain, everything, all the brain stem, and then the smile cord goes down. So this is not very big, and if you look at where the eyes are and the nose, that's the sweet spot. So I will tell you, anything above the eyebrows is probably not going to go through. With the rifle, you got a little better chance, but you've got this ridge here, and it's there's a bony ridge behind your eyebrows. It's there for a reason. It's to protect your brain. And so you can't count on anything going high. So if we were target shooting and you hit up here, a lot of people tell you, oh, that's a great hit. Well, it's not. It's only a little bit better than, than something over here. So what I would tell you to look at is, sometimes they talk about a tee box or you hear a triangle. So look at your buddy, look at the triangle between the tip of the nose and the eyes. That's where you gotta get a bullet if you want to get a central nervous system hit. Now, why do you think we've spent so much time today trying to hit little things? Well, if you're gonna hit this, you gotta be able to hit little things. And if you don't know what your hold off is, you have no chance of getting a good hit on that. If you hit low, you might break a jaw, you might break some teeth or whatever, but you're not gonna stop somebody and kill them. Although a low hit is probably more effective than a, than a high hit. But this is a small thing. This is why we don't talk about shooting people in the head. Because it doesn't work like it does in the movies. All right? Now that's not to say a rifle's got a lot more penetration than a handgun. You've got a better chance of getting through. But that's why we don't, we don't shoot there. All right, so center mass is where I was taught to hit. But again, we've got to be careful turn shoots because the center mass of this target is, is down here, right? I have seen targets that have a bullseye down here. You guys seen those targets? The old police targets? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, those are stupid. I hate those targets because if you put a bullseye down here, people are going to shoot down there. And I catch myself when I shoot all those targets because you want to shoot the X-ring. This is not the place where you want to hit. All right, have you guys taken CPR? All right, remember how they told you to place your hand? You find the xiphoid process? Well, do that right now. Just do that if you're wearing a plate and you're doing it. All right, so put your fist right where they show you to, to put that. All right, everybody look around. Your heart is about the size of your fist, and that's where it is in your chest. Does that make sense? So if you're going to shoot the heart, this is the size target. And again, it kind of matches up with these geometric shapes we're going to shoot. All right, feel where your rib cage is. All right, why do you have ribs down to here and there's no ribs down lower? Protect your lungs. Well, the important shit, this is an evolutionary body, they invested a lot of effort growing ribs here. And the important shit's covered by ribs. Everything below your rib cage, that's your abdomen. The diaphragm separates the thorax, the chest cavity from the abdomen. Everything below your rib cage, you could completely lose and still finish a gunfight. Now, eventually there's gonna be some health problems caused by that. But I could surgically remove everything in your abdomen and you'd be perfectly fine to, to finish a gunfight and do whatever you're going to do. All right? You're not going to digest lunch, but that's not important in a fight. So hitting somebody in the abdomen is not going to incapacitate them. It may make them quit, but literally, if you get a gunshot through the abdomen, there's some, there's some infection issues that may kill you a couple of days later. But what they're going to do is they're going to take your intestines and they're going to do, the surgeon's going to do this, and when he finds a, a, a wound, he's going to cut it, just like splicing a hose, and cut the other undamaged end, and he's going to sew, it, sew that together, and he's going to go through and sort it out. And then they're going to clean everything and give you antibiotics. That's how you treat an abdomen wound. There's not a lot of big blood vessels down here. Okay, so what I'm telling you is, a hit above the rib cage is worth more than twice what a hit down the abdomen is. So that's why when we say center mass, we'll talk about upper chest or upper center of mass. 
but we're talking about a hand span size thing up here. All right, so what the uh, what the anatomy looks like. Coincidentally, the size of our triple gold. Exactly. So your heart is not over here where you say the Pledge of Allegiance. It's right where that fist was. It's offset to the left about an inch or so. This is not perfectly centered, but it's not very far off. And so it's about right here. It's a good lucky thing like that. Okay, so coming off the top of it, what what, what comes out of the top Veins of the heart? Veins and arteries. Veins and arteries. What's the difference between a vein and an artery? Vein is since the direction does not have oxygen. Okay, have you heard everybody say, oh my God, it was terrible, he had all this venous bleeding. No, because veins carry blood back to the heart, so they're low, what you need to remember is they're low pressure. Arteries are high pressure. Arterial bleeding spurts. It's, have you ever seen a hose that was under pressure get cut? That's what arterial bleeding is, it's that, it's that spurt. And, uh, but veins and arteries run together, so if you understand how the, the blood system works, you kind of see what's going on here. So. This is the highest part, the, uh, what's the big artery on top of the heart? The aorta. The aorta. So it's about half the size, right? There's a big thing up in here. So that's a good place to hit too, but literally the sweet spot in this whole thing is about that big. Okay? You've got big veins. Veins and arteries are paired the way they run through the body. What are, what are these veins and arteries? Carotid. Yes, carotid artery, juggler, vein, right? Okay. Then they, there's some that come down and go under your arms, and they're they're paired and they run along the bone to protect you. So if you get cut on the outer arm, your your arteries. I mean, we're we're pretty hard to kill. Humans are pretty well designed. And so what are what is that artery down here under your arm? Brachial. Yeah. And then you got big vein arteries that come into the pelvis and they split here. And so sometimes you'll hear people say, "Oh, we're going to shoot into the pelvic girdle," and they'll like describe this big area here. Well, there are veins and arteries, but what is this artery coming down? Femoral. Femoral. The femoral artery is about as big as your thumb, and it's buried on the inside of your, your femur. It's up, up inside the leg, so it's pretty well protected. So, it's, it's kind of, if you could hit it, it'd be great, but it's kind of hard to hit. Let's see if your drawings are still in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so while there's a lot of emotionally valuable terrain and real estate down here, <laughs> the you know the things that are going to bleed out are hard to hit. So that's why we don't aim for the femoral artery. If you hit it, it's going to be luck, right? <laughs> but so we got we got this big thing here. So if we can load this up, one round may go right past the heart, may not hit anything. And you hear you'll hear people say, "Oh, he got shot," and the doctor said if the bullet had been one centimeter to the right, it would have hit his aorta, right? Well, that's why we want to shoot three or four rounds. So if one of them is one centimeter off, maybe the next one will punch that. So we hit this high pressure stuff, it starts to bleed. Does that instantly kill you? No. 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 It takes you about 30 seconds to lose enough blood to lose consciousness. That's the incapacitation the guy can't, can't fight. He's going to lose so much blood. So we need to get multiple hits up in here. That's our best bet. Have you seen the anatomy targets with all the stuff drawn on it? Well, I like those targets for awareness, but here's what I don't like. Somebody jerks around and shoots you down here, and they're like, aha, but I hit him in the pancreas because they're looking at the anatomy. Well, the pancreas is not going to end the gunfight.